Shalom everyone, I hope you're all doing really really well. Now it has been quite a while since I did my last video but I thought this would be a good time to do a video because as some of you know my beautiful wonderful amazing beloved uh, did a live video during Shabbat yesterday in which the topic was modesty. In particular it was about Christian women seducing men with how they dress and um, seeing some of the comments one of them stood out to me as an ex-Muslim and I thought I would perhaps briefly address it and hence for this video. Now the video or rather the comment or the question was posed and it was why do Muslim women love and strive for modesty unlike Christian women who fight it and I thought that was so so true in the world that we live in today where Christian and believing women alike fight modesty they will go on the defensive they will make up any excuse under the sun as to why they shouldn't or don't have to dress a certain way whereas the muslim world women in particular of course and men strive for modesty they take that extremely seriously i know i did as an ex-muslim i know i still do as a torah observant believer it is something that i'm so passionate about and i think it needs to be spoken about more because it clearly is not getting through to the believing women um, and as I said it is extremely extremely important now I do think that Muslim women were brought up in that way to strive for modesty to you know they were trained and brought up to be proper wives proper mothers I know I was and so we do take that quite seriously and yeah it is definitely the way you are brought up um, speaking about modesty as well of course and religion definitely does play a big role in it as well you know Muslims who are practicing take Allah take the word of Allah uh, extremely seriously they are obedient to the T like there is no gray area there is no middle ground they are obedient they have that um, dedication to Allah where whatever he says goes no cherry picking no excuse and I think that's where we as believers lack extremely um, unfortunately and I think you know and I've said in my previous videos there are things about Islam like modesty like well all things modesty where I agree with with also how Muslim women do carry themselves as well in terms of their obedience and dedication to Allah and even though unfortunately they are worshipping and loving the wrong God they still have that dedication that most believing Torah observant women or Christian women unfortunately lack and lack a lot and and so as I said Christian women believing women unfortunately by the sounds of it would make any excuse under the sun as to not follow scripture, not follow or be obedient to Yahweh. And I think that is a major, major issue. Like there is just no obedience. They say, you know, I follow Yeshua, you know, I love Yahweh. But when it comes to modesty, when it comes to people telling them to put some clothes on, they just, it's like, no, nope, well, you know, Yeshua died for me, so I can just wear whatever I want. And I think that is an extreme dangerous way to live and go about life, especially when we are called to be set apart. Now, uh, another thing that my wonderful beloved touched upon was with the few comments that were coming through, he mentioned that, you know, if you're sounding like a feminist, if you're sounding like Jezebel, even though you call yourself a believer, you have demon issues. And I do believe that and I think many many women many believing women need to you know do deliverance and most importantly also repent repent for having that Jezebel spirit repent for disobeying Yahweh and that's all it comes down to really you can you know be angry with me or you know Paul all you want for speaking about modesty and telling you people off but at the end of the day, you are being disobedient to Yahweh, and that's something you need to work on on yourself. And 
Another comment that was made, actually, um, this was by a Torah observant believer, I believe, and it has to do and ties with the whole Muslim thing. And she said, Muslim women sometimes have no choice but to dress modestly, and women who hear the Holy Spirit know in their hearts how to dress. Now, I'm not really saying that there aren't some Muslim women who are forced by their husbands or their fathers or brothers to dress a certain way, but majority of the people that I know, you know, including family members, you know, we cover up, we have covered up, we wear hijabs, niqabs, because we want to, because, or rather they want to, but I did it when I was Muslim, purely because of our faith, or they, their faith rather, I want to speak for them now, their faith in Allah, you know, their obedience, their dedication, their determination to please Allah. And I think we need to get to that point where we are obedient, we are faithful, we are determined to please Yahweh and have that dedication to Him instead of making up any excuse under the sun as to why we shouldn't do something. And, you know, going back to you know, her saying, and women who hear the Holy Spirit know in their hearts how to dress. And then when you think or see them dressing the way they do, you think, well, really? Because, you know, no offense, but if you had the Holy Spirit and if you hear from him, I really doubt that he would want you to wear tank tops, booty shorts. Um, and just the other day, you know, we came across a so-called Christian who was like wearing booty shorts. And I was like, I don't want to get out of the car to even be near her. Um, and I know that sounds judgmental, but it's like, you know, you're supposed to be a believer and you're wearing booty shorts pretty much in public. Um, so, you know, I doubt that, you know, the Holy Spirit wants you to wear, like I said, tan tops or booty shorts or have a full face of makeup or, you know, perfume to the point where you give others a headache or make, you know, men turn around for you and, you know, be that stumbling block for them. So I think we really need to examine also what we do say including that, because in my opinion, the Holy Spirit would never want us to be like the world or dress like the world and just be half naked. And to me, it's not even half nakedness. It's to me kind of seems like you're just naked anyway. Um, no offense, but yeah, I think even sometimes when people say, you know, oh, you know, wear a head covering and then you look at them and they're just wearing a little bit of a cloth on their scalp or, you know, a bandana or, you know, however you want to call it. And I think maybe from personal experience, because I do come from an Islamic background, to me, it's like, that's not a head covering. Um, a head covering for me is the way that Muslims actually, Muslim women do dress and the way they cover their whole entire hair. Because I think the purpose of a head covering is to cover your hair. So cover it, you know. But I think everyone's on a different journey. So, you know, I pray that Yahweh does speak to your hearts, you know, regardless. But, you know, my point, I think, was that if you are following Yahweh, if you do hear from the Holy Spirit, there is no way you would be walking around immodest and making up excuses as to why you can dress immodestly and then sort of play the blame game and, you know, um, blame the men for, you know, not being able to control themselves. And, you know, yes, men do tend to look, um, and, you know, I don't even blame them at times because it's just the way the women dress. And I think so many women, maybe even believing women, are, you know, go to the point where it's like, well, I'm tired of being object sexually, you know, objectified by men. And I think sometimes, as someone on the internet said previously, well, Maybe you just have a marketing um, issue. You know, you're marketing yourself wrong. Um, and if you're dressing like a prostitute, um, then I guess that's how men will see you and how they will treat you. Um, and, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, when I do look at believing Christian women dressed like the world, no offense, but it does look like, they're prostitutes and I think back in the day you know prostitutes even dressed a bit more humble and a bit more modest than most believing women do dress now 
And that is a major issue and something that definitely does need to be looked at. Um, and I think, you know, instead of playing the blame game and telling people or telling men, you know, to control themselves or, you know, why are you looking at, you know, this woman or whatever, I think there needs to come a point where it's like, well, as I actually listened in a previous CD a few days back, you know, the rabbi said, if you don't want your husband looking at other women, then start by dressing in a way that will not cause other men to look at you. And I thought that was like, wow, that is so true. So that is one big thing that I do want to stress out as well. You know, if instead of saying, oh, men can't control themselves or, you know, well, they do this and that, how about you start with yourself and start with being obedient to Yahweh and dressing in a more modest way that would also cause men not to look and stumble over you. So I think we need to have that responsibility and accountability as well, instead of just pointing the finger and, you know, market yourself better as well, as someone said the other day um, in a video. And I think also that what was pointed out to me in that CD that I listened to, um, I think it was called Eyes of Holiness, um, was that immodesty and faith, immodesty and faith, do not go together. And I think that is very, very true as well in itself. I think it all stems from the heart. And I think if you're not being obedient to Yahweh, everything else will crumble in a sense, if that makes sense. Um, I think, and I say modesty and faith don't go together because as the person mentioned in the CD, you know, he says, because if a woman knows that Yahweh sees her, everything she does is out of modesty and with modesty. And they also pointed out that immodest women show themselves cheap and available to everybody. And that's true. I mean, like you're calling yourself a believer, <clears throat> excuse me, but you're walking around dressed just like the world, having men stare at you. And it's like, well, you have a husband, dress more appropriately, appropriately, dress in a way that respects your husband instead of just playing the blame game. You know, I, myself, have always loved modesty. I have never found any issue with it. I think it's something that is extremely beautiful. And, you know, it is something that, you know, I dress in a way that shows that only my husband gets to see me, that only my husband gets to see my hair, he gets to see my body, and I go to the extent where I don't even want to talk to men, um, get alone, look at them. So I think where I'm extreme in most cases, and I love it, I think women of Yahweh need to get to the point where they too are also extreme otherwise you know it's just going to get worse and worse unfortunately and I think yeah I mean and I'm not saying you have to be like me where it's like you don't have to you don't sit next to me other men you don't shake hands with other men you don't you know look at other men you don't talk to other men um actually that would be wonderful but But I think most of you, no offense, do need to come to repent and take this a bit more seriously um, because we need to do what is pleasing to Yahweh and not our own flesh and what is comfortable for us. I think we need to take Yahweh seriously and do as he says or not at all. Um, there is definitely no middle ground with Yahweh and we definitely need to be extreme. You know, if you want to be just as extreme as me, um, but you need to start somewhere. And I think repentance is a good way to start. So I think I may go into a bit more detail in maybe my next video, uh, just because I don't want to make this video extremely long, but I will probably most, most likely continue with this video and make a part two. So thank you for watching and until next time, shalom.